Hey guys, this is Lisa from NYC Gal Outs. Okay guys, I'm like too lazy to scrub the rest of my makeup off, but it's legit like 1.30 in the morning and you know, they say that you should remove your makeup, but I'm just like so damn lazy, but this is like the remnant of what's left of my makeup. Um, anyway, so I went to go see uh, the Amazon Studios rom-com movie Upgraded. I don't know who any of the actors and actresses are except for Marissa Tomei. And I went with my daughter, my teenage daughter. It was really cute. Um, you know, there was also an opportunity to take like, uh, there was like a photo booth that you could take um, pictures of like mean girls. So that was really cute. And when I saw it, I like immediately thought of Monica from Salt Lake City because it <laughs> like, you know, her and that epic fail with the burn book. I mean, I think she was trying to be cute. I think she was like trying to, um, I don't know what she was doing, to be honest with you. I think she was trying to earn some extra brownie points, thinking that it was going to resonate with the network and with Andy, but it didn't. <laughs> um, anyway, so we went to go see it. It was in Leewood, Kansas. We went to go see the pre-screening of Upgraded. That's what the movies call. And this time when we went there, um, where they had the pre-screening was a lot nicer than, uh, so the last one that we went to around, uh, around the area was, where the hell did we go? It was another place, but I don't know what that town is called. I can't, I can't remember if it was on the Kansas side or the Missouri side, because like legit, there's a blue bridge right by the base. And once you cross over to the bridge, it says, welcome to Missouri. I freaking hate it whenever my GPS says that. And the bridge is like literally like right outside the gate. Um, so I'm, I can't remember if like Merry Little Batman was in Missouri or if it was in Kansas, but anyway, um, this one for Upgraded, it was in a much nicer theater and the seats were nicer too. Like the seats were really nice. It was like one of those reclining seats and everything, very, very, very big, very roomy. And then of course, I always like getting early. I, I like getting to these events early because I like to sit next to the reserve rows. Well, I mean, you never get to sit next to the reserve rows because they're reserved. But what I do is I like to sit in the row that is above the reserve, that is above the reserve row. So that's why I go to these events early. So we got there early. And of course, I sat in a seat that was at a row that was above the reserve rows. So this time though, at this screening event, they actually had the names printed onto, um, like they have a piece of paper that they put on the reserve rows. And then in each of the seats, they had the names of who it was reserved for. And it was a lot of movie critics that was there. So that was really awesome. Um, the bad thing is that you can't take any pictures at these events because of course, you know, they don't want anyone to ruin it by like freaking recording anything. Like, you know, it's a pre-screening. So of course they don't want you recording anything. They don't want you taking pictures of anything because there's always that one person who thinks that, oh, well, you know, this is going to get me a hundred thousand followers on my social media account. If I upload this, you were able to take a, um, there was a QVR, it's a QVR or QVC. Wait, no, it's QV. No, that's HVC, right? Not the home shopping network, but I, I think like that little code that you could scan is QVC, right? Or say QVR. Anyway, so that there was a little code that you could scan on your phone and it takes you to a photo booth. And when you take your picture, you could upload it and it has like the photo drop or photo background of upgraded. And I, I took a picture with my daughter and, um, that was cute. And of course, I got my free popcorn and soda. 
my daughter left the bathroom. She's like, oh my God, mom, this bathroom is so nice. Like legit guys, my daughter went to the bathroom and she took like a bunch of pictures of the bathroom and then she uploaded it onto Facebook. And cause like she likes to brag about this stuff. She likes to brag to her friends. Like my mom reviews stuff for free and you know, all this other stuff. And which I understand she's a teenager. So of course, like, you know, if when I was her age, I would be bragging about that shit too. Um, so legit guys, she went to the bathroom and she was hanging out in the bathroom. She missed like most of the movie because she was hanging out in the bathroom and uploading pictures onto her Facebook so that people could see the freaking bathroom. She was like, mom, this is like the nicest bathroom I ever seen. There was like a lounge, uh, a lounge couch in the bathroom and, you know, it had like these really nice, uh, humongous mirrors and all this other stuff. And I was just like, Ava, you're missing the movie. She's like, oh, well, mom, blah, 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 blah. Like, anyway, I mean, I, I don't know. I thought she would enjoy watching this and she like spent most of the movie in the bathroom. Anyway, um, so it was a very cute movie. So guys, spoiler alert. You know me, I do spoilers. So, I mean, if you don't want to know what happened at this point, stop watching the video. Stop watching this video. Um, but guys, before I get into it, don't forget to hit the like, follow, subscribe, leave me a comment and all that good jazz. If you guys have enough time, head on over to Spotify, listen to a couple of my episodes. My regular co-host is Lindsay, the housewife historian. We are currently recapping Beverly Hills, but I also have, um, you know, random Bravo fans, super fans that come on to my podcast to also just talk some tea and kiki with me. And yeah, the movie is about this young woman named Anna Santos from Florida, who is living in New York City in a rent stabilized apartment with her sister and her sister's fiance. And of course, like, you know, the sister and the fiance kind of want her to like get the hell out because it's a one bedroom apartment and it's New York City. It's very expensive. Now, Anna is in New York City because she's doing some sort of internship at this auction house called Irwin's. No, it is not a real auction house in New York City. I mean, in New York City, you have Christie's, you have Sotheby's. I've never heard of Irwin. If it is an actual auction house, I've never freaking heard of them. But it's um, it's cute because um, the the sister's fiance, he keeps on saying to her, like, you know, well, hey, maybe you should join the Navy. Like, he, he keeps on telling her to, like, join the Navy to, like, basically, you know, like, because she has, like, an art degree, an art history degree. But, like, legit, guys, what kind of fucking job are you going to get with an art history degree? Um, so Anna Santos, she is doing an internship program in Manhattan, in New York City for Irwin's Auction House. And she's working under uh, this woman, Claire. Claire is the character that Marissa Tomain plays. But Claire is actually, you know, she is very, um, she's very motivated and she has a very dominant personality, but she's actually not like, um, you know, she's a perfectionist and I guess she could come off bitchy, but you, you could tell it's not like in a bad way. It's not like the devil wears Prada. It's, it's not like that. Um, because there are moments throughout the movie where Claire actually acknowledges Anna. So the movie starts off with Anna is like, basically, you know, she's just slopping around opening and folding chairs and doing stuff like that. And there is, I, I legit have no idea what the hell their names are, but they're beautiful. They're very tall. And Anna's kind of like, she's short. She looks very short next to these two young, beautiful, they look like models. I mean, they legit were like six feet tall. One of them was black and English, I think. And the other one was white, a white American and a black English part, a woman. But both of them were beautiful. And they were like the, kind of like the, you know how like all of these rom-coms have like a bitchy person, like bitchy mean girls. Okay. So 
those were the two bitchy mean girls, the the two gorgeous model looking girls, the black one and the white one. And um, it starts off with there is an auction going on and Anna is like flipping through the catalog and she notices a mistake in the catalog. She notices that it is listed as oil instead of acrylic. And she lets Cl Anna lets Claire know and um, Claire makes sure to tell the auctioner auctioneer is an auctioner no it's auctioneer right she she makes sure to let the auctioneer know that um you know there is a typo on the cattle on the catalog so afterwards she fires the guy <laughs> that made the typo and then you know she acknowledges Anna for having a good eye and catching that and because of that um because she noticed that Anna had a really good eye and caught that. She actually ends up inviting Anna to go with her to London. She was called to London because of like this big, um, this big auction, this big art auction that her company, that Irwin, is trying to um, auction for the owner. And so she had to fly out to London to take care of whatever the fuck, and. She told Anna to come along as her third assistant. So the two gorgeous girls, they're like assistant one and two. And then she at like the last moment, spurt of the moment, because she noticed that Anna had like a great eye, great attention to detail. She called Anna up and was like, do you have a passport? Do you want to come to London? And Anna came to London. But of course, you know, um, the two gorgeous assistants were like really bitchy to Anna and the, the white one, Blondie, I'm just going to call her Blondie. So the, the Blondie one, she, she was like really nasty, very mean girlish. I mean, like these rom-coms are kind of ridiculous it's because it's kind of like Regina George, right? I mean, but like they're high school kids. So it's, it's kind of like, oh, okay, well they're high school and they're stupid but these were supposed to be grown women that act like this. So I don't know. Maybe some grown women do act like that. I don't know. Well, anyway, they get to the airport and, you know, the gorgeous assistants are being like really bitchy and nasty to Anna. And the, the airplane, not the airplane, the, oh well, yes, air, the airline, the airline representative that is, um, you know, checking them in and giving their tickets and everything. She's a black woman and she overhears how the two gorgeous assistants are treating Anna. And she like, you know, when Anna goes, because they're flying first class, but Anna is getting like, she got economy class. So because, um, the rep, the airline rep saw how bitchy the gorgeous assistants were being to Anna she actually upgrades Anna's flight to um, to first class, which, by the way, they do do that because I remember one time I flew Delta and they were just like, um, they upgraded me <laughs> to first class. It was like so awesome. I was, I was flying um, Delta, I was flying Delta. I had my baby with me and it was my birthday and they were like, it's your birthday. I th the, the woman that was checking me in, she was like, it's your birthday. And I said, yes. She's like, oh girl, you could fly first class, like legit. And, and they have like the, they have the, um, it's up to them if they want to do that or not. They absolutely do have that option of doing that if they feel like it. And it, like, it was awesome because, you know, I paid for an economy class, like a basic economy class ticket and um, the, the Delta representative at the counter, she like, she was like, well, happy birthday. You know, we'll, we're going to put you in first class. So that was really nice. But anyway, so that was what happened with Anna, the airline representative at the counter during check-in, they saw, she saw how bitchy and mean the gorgeous assistants were being to Anna. And she decided to upgrade her flight to London first class. 
when she was in the first class lounge, she accidentally bumps into like this British guy, Will, and spills her Bloody Mary drink on him, ruining his shoes and like his trouser. And then during the flight, Will actually ends up in the pod next to her. And he's on the phone and he's basically saying like, oh yeah, you know, this like this woman was like, you know, whatever, she was probably drunk or something. And it's like Anna that's sitting next to him. But during the flight, you know, they talk to each other and um, Will ends up really liking her. And it turns out, so Will asked her like, you know, what, cause she tells him that like, this is her first time going to London. And Will's like, well, what are you going to London for? And she said it's for work. And he mistakenly thinks that she is the director of the New York office for Irwin. And she lets him to believe it. Like she doesn't correct him. She doesn't say that, no, I'm just an intern. So, because they were talking about what she does, what her job is. And he mistakenly thought that she was the director instead of Claire. So, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those like Cinderella stories. They're all the fucking same. Even Pretty Woman is a Cinderella story. It's basically like, I mean, Pretty Woman was a hooker and she ended up, her Prince Charming was like some corporate raider that ended up like going up a balcony to like whatever. So they're all the same. All of these rom-coms where you have like some rich guy and some like, you know, middle income or lower income female they're all Cinderella stories. Anyway, so this is another one. Will is actually from a very rich family. They land in London and then um, Will asks her, like, you know, where are you going? She tells him that she's staying at this very fancy hotel, but it's actually Claire that's staying at the hotel. And then her, his Will's mom is there to um, at the airport to pick him up. And his mom is like really eccentric. She's like really hippie-ish and, and all this other stuff. So she's, she's great. She's like this awesome person. And, you know, I mean, are rich people really like that? I kind of feel like rich people aren't really like that because her, uh, because Will's mom just seems like so wonderful, like just so incredibly wonderful. And I kind of feel like rich people like that are in that I mean, yes, there are very eccentric, rich people, but I feel like, you know, they're not that welcoming of people who are not also filthy rich. But anyway, so um, the mom is wonderful. I love her. She's probably like my favorite character in the movie. Anyway, through all of that mistaken identity or whatever, you know, Will thinks Anna is the director of the New York office for Irwin. And then she is, a, so Anna is able to get all of these like little, um, like these little freebies and these little extras that Claire wants or needs to get to boister herself. And she's able to get all of that stuff for Claire, but Claire also acknowledges it. And she's like, she even says to Anna, I see what you're doing. And I just want to tell you that I, I see it. I, I want you to know that it, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Um, which is why I don't like, like I said, you know, it, it's not really like the devil wears product because it's not like she's like this, I mean, I guess she could come off bitchy, but like, she's also acknowledging Anna as, as an employee, as a good worker and stuff. Anyway, so um, it turns out that Will's mother is the account that Irwin is like trying to sell the paintings for. She has a whole collection of paintings that she's trying to um, sell. So she's trying to auction. And, you know, through whatever kind of whatever... Catherine, the mom's name's Catherine. Catherine decides to cancel the auction. And, you know, of course, Claire and, and the guy Irwin that owns the auction house, he flips out and all this other stuff. And then it's like, you know, guys, I'm just going to skip to the end. So in the end, everything works out. She confesses 
everything to Catherine. And of course, Catherine is so understanding because she's eccentric. She's this, she's that. And Catherine was like, dear, I don't care. You know, she's basically saying that, you know, this, this gives her an opportunity to lower the commission and and she was basically saying like, you know, whatever. And like, she really took it great. Like she did not feel bad that she got duped. Um, and then Anna was fired and escorted out by security. <laughs> but, you know, the next day, Catherine comes in with Anna. So of course, you know, she gets her job back and everything. And then Anna tells the boss that she wants Claire to be on that sale with her because Claire is like, she works so hard and she's like, you know, she, like she is, she, nobody else cares about that auction house as much as Claire does and all this other stuff. So all is well, that ends well. And then six months later, they're back in New York City and Claire gets to, not Claire, they're back in New York City and Anna gets to open up her own gallery. She gets to move out the fuck out of that one bedroom apartment that she was like bumming off her sister and her, her sister's fiance. And she gets her own apartment that looks very nice. She has her own art gallery and Claire is there on opening day to support her and everything. And then she had invited Will, but Will didn't go to the opening. But as she is leaving, she sees these, um, this salt and pepper shaker that in the beginning of the movie, she tried to steal from the airline um, in first class. And Will, she, she sees it, so she knows that Will is there, and they kiss. And of course, it's like freaking, I don't know, if you ever seen Pretty Woman, it's kind of like the ending to Pretty Woman except Anna wasn't a hooker. She was a college graduate with a art history degree working as an intern, like working as an intern instead of as a hooker. But basically same concept, rich guy and, you know, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, it was cute. My daughter wasn't into it because she was like, mom is so unbelievable. And every single rom-com is like this. It's like every single rom-com has some rich guy and some poor girl or some working class girl. And it's like, you know, it, like it's Cinderella story. I, well, I told her was, I, I told her like those kind of plots and those kind of endings to call Cinderella stories because I mean, legit, that's, that's the whole plot of Cinderella. 